We rested in silence for some time. Don Juan covered his face with his hat and remained motionless as if he were asleep. I became absorbed in writing my notes until he made a sudden movement that made me jolt. You have a knack for hunting. And that's what you should learn, hunting. We are not going to talk about plants anymore. I don't think we ever have anyway, have we? He said, laughing. We spent the rest of the day walking in every direction while he gave me an unbelievably detailed explanation about rattlesnakes. The way they nest, the way they move around, their seasonal habits, their quirks of behavior. Then he proceeded to corroborate each of the points he had made and finally he caught and killed a large snake. He cut its head off, cleaned its viscera, skinned it, and roasted the meat. His movements had such grace and skill that it was a sheer pleasure just to be around him. I had listened to him and watched him spellbound. My concentration had been so complete that the rest of the world had practically vanished for me. Eating the snake was a hard re-entry into the world of ordinary affairs. I felt nauseated when I began to chew a bite of the snake meat. It was an ill-founded queasiness, as the meat was delicious, but my stomach, my stomach seemed to be rather an independent unit. I could hardly swallow at all. I thought Don Juan would have a heart attack from laughing so hard. Afterward, we sat down for a leisurely rest in the shade of some rocks. Your hunter's spirit has returned to you. Now you're hooked. I wanted him to elaborate on his statement that I was hooked. Hunters will always hunt. I am a hunter myself. I hunt in order to live. I can live off the land anywhere. To be a hunter means that one knows a great deal. It means that one can see a world in different ways. In order to be a hunter, one must be in perfect balance with everything else. Today we took a little snake. I had to apologize to her for cutting her life off so suddenly and so definitely. I did what I did knowing that my own life will also be cut off someday in very much the same manner, suddenly and definitely. So all in all, we and the snakes are on par. One of them fed us today. I had never conceived a balance of that kind when I used to hunt, I said. That's not true. You didn't just kill animals. You and your family all ate the game. I really think that you have a touch for hunting, and we have been barking up the wrong tree. Perhaps you will be willing to change your way of life in order to become a hunter. He reminded me that I found out there were good and bad spots for me. He added that I also found out the specific colors associated with them. That means you have a knack for hunting. Not everyone who tries would find their colors and their spots at the same time. To be a hunter sounded very nice and romantic, but it was an absurdity to me since I really didn't particularly care to hunt. You don't have to care to hunt or to like it. You have a natural inclination. I think the best hunters never like hunting. They just do it well, that's all. I had the feeling Don Juan was capable of arguing his way out of anything, and yet he maintained he did not like to talk at all. It's like what I've told you about hunters. I don't necessarily like to talk. I just have a knack for it, and I do it well. That's all. I found his mental agility truly funny. Hunters must be exceptionally tight individuals. A hunter leaves very little to chance. I have been trying all along to convince you that you must learn to live in a different way. So far, I have not succeeded. There was nothing you could have grabbed onto. Now it's different. I have brought back your old hunter spirit. Perhaps through it, you will change. I protested that I did not want to be a hunter. I reminded him in the beginning I had just wanted him to tell me about medicinal plants. But he had made me stray so far away from my original purpose that I could not clearly recall any more whether or not I had really wanted to even learn about plants. Good. Really good. If you don't have such a clear picture of what you want, you may become more humble. Why are you doing all this for me, Don Juan? I'm having a gesture with you. Someday you yourself will have the same gesture with others. Let's say that it's my turn. One day I found out that if I wanted to be a hunter worthy of self-respect, I had to change the way of my life. I used to whine and complain a great deal. I had good reasons to feel shortchanged. I am an Indian, 
and Indians are treated like dogs. There was nothing I could do to remedy that, so all I was left with was my sorrow. But then my good fortune spared me, and someone taught me to hunt, and I realized that the way I lived was not worthy of living, so I changed it. But I'm happy with my life, Don Juan. Why should I have to change it? Do you think that you and I are equals? He asked in a sharp voice. Of course we're equals, I said. I was, naturally, being condescending. I felt very warm towards him, even though at times I did not know what to do with him. Yet I still held in the back of my mind, although I would never voice it, the belief that I, being a university student, a man of the sophisticated Western world, was superior to an Indian. No, we are not. Why, certainly we are, I protested. No, we are not equals. I am a hunter and a warrior, and you are a pimp. My mouth fell open. I could not believe that Don Juan actually said that. I dropped my notebook and stared at him dumbfoundedly, and then, of course, I became furious. He looked at me with calm and collected eyes. I avoided his gaze. And then he began to talk. He enunciated his words clearly. They poured out smoothly and deadly. He said that I was pimping for someone else. That I was not fighting my own battles, but the battles of some unknown people. That I did not want to learn about plants or hunting or anything. And that his world of precise acts and feelings and decisions was indefinitely more effective than the blundering idiocy I called my life. After he finished talking, I was numb. He had spoken without belligerence or conceit, but with such power and yet such calmness that I was not even angry anymore. We remained silent. I felt embarrassed and could not think of anything appropriate to say. I waited for him to break the silence. Hours went by. Don Juan became motionless by degrees, until his body had acquired such a strange, almost frightening rigidity that his silhouette became difficult to make out as it got dark. And finally, when it was pitch black around us, he seemed to have merged into the blackness of the stones. His state of stillness was so total, it was as if he did not exist any longer. It was midnight when I finally realized he could and would stay motionless there in that wilderness, perhaps forever, if he had to. His world of precise acts and feelings and decisions was indeed superior. I quietly touched his arm and tears flooded me.